Postal's been a great tool for me. In the day job, I'm typically building prototypes of new features, and so the output of a build tool has always been less important to me than how easy it is to get up and running and iterate on things as I'm building them. And that's something that Parcel has always excelled at, basically living up to its promise of configuration free. Obviously something like Webpack has never been an option. Parcel's been moving to version two of Parcel for quite some time now, and I don't know anybody on the Parcel team, but from the outside point of view, the transition from version one to version two has seemed a little bit chaotic at times. Even now as I'm filming this, you're never quite sure, even looking at the documentation or the homepage, which version of Parcel it necessarily applies to, and whether you should actually be using version 2 of Parcel or version 1. In the meantime, during this transition between version 1 and version 2 of Parcel, I've started to notice um, new kinds of build tools coming on the scene, um, bundlers and the like. Um, and one of those that's caught my attention is Snowpack. The USP of Snowpack is that it actually does less. So, in a normal build tool, when you click save, it would compile those files, build them all out to a destination folder, which is then served up to the web browser. Tools like Snowpack and also Vite, although I've not tried Vite yet, um, they work slightly differently in that where possible, they don't even do any transformations. And they basically take the files that are in your source folder and just serve them up directly to the web browser. And also in the, in the dev environment, they don't even bother smushing stuff together. They basically just let each module of your JavaScript get served up as a module straight to the, the browser. Now that's conceptually quite different than Parcel, even though it seems a subtle distinction. And we'll look at what that means in practice momentarily. But that is an approach that really appeals to me, this idea of doing less with the stuff that you're authoring and basically just getting out of the way. I basically just want my CSS source files, whether that's PostCSS or SAS, I want those compiled. If I'm writing in TypeScript, I obviously want that compiled, but if I'm writing in modern JavaScript, then why bother putting it through something that needs compiling? Um, that can just get served straight to the browser. So this idea of doing less and less and keeping things really, really quick as you're using the build tool and the, the project that you work on gets bigger and bigger is something that really appeals to me. So I decided to try and migrate um, a couple of projects from Parcel to Snowpack. And I've been using um, Snowpack version 3.22 um, as I filmed this. Migrating from Parcel to Snowpack wasn't quite as straightforward as I hoped it might be. I don't know whether it was just ineptitude on my part, um, a lack of clear documentation from Snowpack, probably a combination of all those things. Um, but there were a number of things along the way which I don't think were super clear and so I'd like to call them out in this video. So this just serves as some notes that I hope others will find useful along the way. I'm going to start by looking at some of the more distinct conceptual differences between something like Parcel and Snowpack. And then once we're done with that and wrapped our heads around that, I'm going to get into things like how to make a SAS quicker with Snowpack. and some little idiosyncrasies about how you import JavaScript files in Snowpack as opposed to Parcel. Now this isn't going to be a super in-depth line by line, this is how you install Snowpack. I'm assuming a degree of competency in that regard, so as long as you can follow the, in the install instructions along on the Snowpack website, I'm going to assume you can do that just fine. Um, this is more about once you've got these things up and running, if you've used Parcel you'll, you'll understand the sort of differences that I'm talking about, but just to give you a kind of York Notes overview of the fundamental differences between these two sort of build tool approaches. The first thing that took me an embarrassing amount of time to get my head around with Snowpack is just how fundamentally Snowpack works. In virtually every build tool that I've used for the last sort of nine plus years, you have this concept of source files and you save those source files, they get smushed together and then sent out to a, a dist or a, a build folder or whatever and that's what gets served up to the, the web browser. Um, and that's essentially the way Parcel works. So let's just have a quick refresher. One of the things I love about Parcel is that you don't have to tell it where all your source files are. It's smart enough to look at what's referenced in your index HTML page, which is 
you know, like your entry point in build tool parts, I suppose, and pulls things in from there. So if you look at this uh, index page that I've got here, you can see that in parcel, I uh, reference the main SCSS SAS file, which, you know, is the kind of entry point to all the styles. And down the bottom here, I'm referencing the TypeScript file, which is the, the start of the app in, in TypeScript. By doing this and referencing the, the source files, that's how Parcel is able to pull in all the extra things that it needs. That's how it's able to deduce what it needs to, to pull in and compile. And it, it reads those initial files and then reaches out its build tool tentacles like some kind of file system kraken and drags in all the needed dependencies. And then it does its magic and it transforms these dependencies and spits all that out to a dist folder. So if we have a look here, this is my sort of very basic project that I've spun up here to show you. So Parcel does its thing here, references the styles and the, the TS file there. As you expect, like most build tools, it's it's spitting it out to a folder. In this case, it's dist. So if you have a look in there, you can see that it does the cache bus thing here and, and gives us these cache busted versions of these files. And it does that as you go along, resaves those out each time you save. So that, in essence, is Parcel. Now, Snowpack does things a little bit differently. In Snowpack land, your index file needs to reference the transformed version of the files, even though they don't exist on your file system. I know, it's weird. So I'm gonna say this again, just because it's pretty important to get your head around. With Snowpack, I'm linking to a styles.css file, and I'm linking to an app.js file. Those files do not exist on my file system. You're linking to the, the files that will exist when the transform is done. When you're in dev with Snowpack, you will not see files written. They're transformed, but not onto the file system, only in memory. Now this changes when you run a build. You can see here, if I run npm run build, you can see there the, the build folder, and there it is on the file system, but that's only happening when you are at the end and you want to build that stuff out. So by default, Snowpack is going to assume your entire project directory is a website, and it's going to scan it for every dependency import that it can find. That may be what you want, but probably not. There's probably going to be some things in your project folder that you don't want served up. So for example, you might have a, a folder with documentation for your project, or you might have a, a file and folder in there for all the, the main database passwords for the production site. I'm kidding. But the point is, you will have some things that you want served and some things which you don't. And to get around that problem, um, Snowpack introduces this idea of mounts. To facilitate this, when moving to Snowpack, I find it useful to reorganize things a little from how I had them in Parcel. So where with Parcel, I might have had my authoring files in the root, and Parcel would dutifully gather those up and spit them into a dist folder. With Snowpack, I moved everything into a source folder, an SRC folder that you can see here. So everything that I wanted fundamentally served up lives in that folder. You might want a folder for static assets, which is certainly something that I did. And I've made a folder there called public just above. And that seems to be a bit of a, a naming convention in Snowpack land. So I just, I ran with that and called mine public as well. But just be aware that that isn't, you know, that isn't necessary. You can call it sausages if you want to, that'll just be fine too. But to facilitate that working, you need to just take a little bit of config in the, the Snowpack config.js file. And here's the, the basic mount setup that I've got to achieve that. So you can see here, I'm saying that public is going to resolve to this slash public URL. So that means with the other files project, I can reference slash public and it's going to point to that folder there. We've got two kind of versions of setting up these mounts. This is the kind of expanded object notation, if you like, and this is the simpler version. If you just want to go, this folder gets served here. That's the nice, simple way of doing it. And then you can use this object when you need something with a bit more detail. The reason I've got that there is that static key is by default false. And by setting it to true, Snowpack will never attempt to transform any of the stuff that I've got in that folder. In that case, you can see here, I've got in my public here, I've got a, a fav icon um, and a Snowpack logo, which you can see there on this wonderful site I've spent so long creating for you. And you can see here, this is how I'm pathing to them, slash public, slash public, Snowpack logo, and then yeah, there you can see. Now one, one thing to just note that, that's slightly odd 
about snowpack and I'm not sure if this is just because I've not understood it correctly but you can see uh, with those two files in that public folder I'm using a, a root relative path there and again there now hold on to that thought when we start talking about module resolution shortly as you would expect and a tool like this you can also you know if, if you're writing something it's a, a quick proof of concept or or something of that nature and you want you don't want to do javascript routing you just want simple urls you can see here that you can just nest a, a folder in there stick another index page in it you could link to that as you would expect so i've got there you know i've just got an href there where i'm linking to slash index which is obviously routing to there and then you can see there that you can just link to that and get that nice you know URL there so it looks like you at least know what you're doing if you do want to use a snowpack with you know your own JavaScript based router what you will need to do is add a line like this and what that one says is that if anything comes in any kind of route in the source that matches that wildcard then basically route them to the index and obviously that could be wherever you want to send them by default but that means that you can then do whatever you want in JavaScript in terms of routing rather than relying on the file system itself. That's the essentials of Snowpack. And what I want to do now is get into a few nitty gritty details, things which gave me a bit of a curveball when I first migrated a project across. So we're going to look at TypeScript, a few little things to do with TypeScript, uh, module resolution and how to path things properly in Snowpack because that's a little bit odd in my respect anyway. And then finally we're going to look at SAS and principally how to make that really quick. If you come into Snowpack from Parcel, there's every chance you've got a, a tsconfig file in the root of your folder if you've been writing TypeScript. Well, in Snowpack you just don't need that at all. In fact, you're probably better off not having it there. The reason for that is that Snowpack actually uses Babel, Babel to compile your TypeScript into normal JavaScript. It bypasses the TSC compiler altogether. So I actually found that having the tsconfig file in the in the root of my project seemed to be messing things up. So if you're in a similar position, you've been moving something from parcel, or you typically would have a tsconfig, I would start by removing that altogether and just let Snowpack do its do its thing. One of the really good things about Parcel is that it forced me to start writing my JavaScript and TypeScript in a more of a grown-up way, um, making things actual modules that could be imported to and from files. Um, Snowpack follows the same path. It's using ES modules, as you would expect, because that means that stuff can go straight to the browser. Um, but there's some slight oddities in the way that you can path stuff in Snowpack as opposed to Parcel. Let me show you what I mean. The parcel project that I've been working on day to day in the day job has got heaps of individual components and typically you'll, you'll get at least um, a TypeScript file alongside a, a CSS or a SAS file. And the HTML got taken care of with lit HTML, which I love by the way. Now, as there's lots of nested components, it was usually easier to write the import paths in, in, in TypeScript. So I might do something like that in parcel using this tilde as a reference to the, the project route and then path to whatever it was I was hoping to bring in. That doesn't work in Snowpack, at least I can't get it to work in the time that I've been looking at it. And I've been on the Discord channel, you know, and asked questions and I've I've tweeted the, the project author and as you might expect, got no response. So I'm not sure at the minute why that doesn't work. So I've had to repath every one of these files with this kind of a carry on, depending on how deep up the you know the, the module was that I was trying to import. I think that's slightly wonky. I'm not sure that is how it works. You can do folder relative paths like this, um, and you can do the relative ones like I've just shown you, but you don't seem able to do root relative paths. So somebody please, if you know what I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments or tweet me, email me, whatever, that would be great. Ordinarily, you import in the way you would expect, import such and such from such and such, and you see there the path to that particular file and then just to prove that's working there you go so in fact just to show you what I mean with these if I were to make that source 
which you can see here, that's my project root source, JS mods, boot ES. If I save that, you can see there it does not like that one little bit. No idea why. By default in Snowpack, SAS uses the standard, standard, the Node JavaScript implementation of the SAS compiler, which is a bit slow. It's certainly a lot slower than the PostCSS setup I had before I was using SAS in Parcel. Now it doesn't have to be that way because you can also get Snowpack using the Dart compiler, which is very quick, um, and you can get it. Although it's a slightly sort of more involved config, you can set it up that way so that instead of Snowpack using the Node.js SAS version, it's going to call straight out to the Dart compiler and send your SAS on its way. Let's take a look at how you set that up. It's just a few steps, but I think if you're using SAS day to day, it's well worth the extra effort. If you go to the package homepage on NPM, you can see that you can actually bypass the, the Node SAS version and go straight to the, the Dart version which you have to install separately. So I think that's well worth the hassle. I'm on um, I'm on a Mac here, so I just use the, the Brew install. I used Homebrew um, and installed it, and it's like that. So it's Brew install, sash, sash, sash. <laughs> I don't know why that always seemed funny to me. Um, so good they named it three times. Brew install, sash, um, that'll do its thing. And once that's in place, there's just a little bit of extra config that you need to do in Snowpack. So Ordinarily, inside the plugins, when you install it for normal SAS, you can see here that you just do um, that kind of a carry on. Make sure you put in these extra square brackets because if you don't put those square brackets, these extra square brackets in, it'll give you a, a horrid error message that you likely won't understand. But obviously, you would be so stupid as to miss those and spend like 30 minutes trying to figure out why it wasn't working. So with that in place, we're telling it to use the native version of SAS. You can also use these extra compiler options which are equivalent to what you pass to SAS on the command line. And the only one I'm typically interested in is saying compressed because I want that um, squished down without all the extra space. This is now linked up to use the, the Dart version of SAS. And okay, this is a tiny little project, but just to give you some idea of speed, it's pretty instantaneous. And I imagine that's gonna be a lot quicker than normal SAS, which can typically take a couple of seconds when you're on a bigger project. For me, Snowpack is a bit of a sea change as opposed to the normal build tools that I've been used to. Conceptually, just a little bit to the left, if you will. If you're starting a Greenfield project, I'd say absolutely go ahead and use Snowpack. If you've got something that already exists with another build tool like Parcel, I would tell you to be a bit more cautious. I certainly don't think that Snowpack has the the depth of support and stack overflow questions and answers to necess necessarily support everything you might come across when you find yourself in the weeds with the particulars of the project that you're working on. Just something to think about. I'm out the other side now of getting my head around Snowpack and getting projects up and running with it. But I'm not sure it's necessarily worth the hassle if you've got a, a large existing project in something like Parcel. It was certainly far simpler for me to upgrade my Parcel 1 project to Parcel 2 than it was to try and get either of those projects ported across to Snowpack. But I do really appreciate this subtle shift in tooling that we're seeing where these tools do as little as possible. That's a trend I really hope continues, and I'm sure it will. And in the meantime, I'm off to give Vita try.